We're sitting on the terrace of Aon Benfield's uh, headquarters at the Reinsurance Rendezvous. And we're fortunate enough to be able to talk to John Moore, who's the international head of analytics for Aon Benfield. You can tell us a little bit about what, uh, what they analyze and uh, how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a lot to analyze in our market, and uh, I'll try and keep it brief. But, you know, our, our, um, our remit as Aon Benfield Analytics is really to do the the risk quantification part of uh, you know re you know, reinsurance transaction that's mm -hmm. our that's our core skill base um, the market is obviously um, reinsurance for catastrophe but not just catastrophe um, we do reinsurance uh, modeling for all kinds of other casualty and long tail lines of business as well okay. so that the, the mix and the type of people that we have in our team is very eclectic but essentially technical so it's everything from actuaries to engineers my background's engineering uh, to uh, size scientists seismologists people with hydrology background so so there's a uh, it's essentially a risk quantification uh, okay about how many group. people are on your team gosh um for aon benfield worldwide we stand at roughly around 530 people wow. in analytics so we're a really significant part of the workforce uh, in the business. I think that sort of smacks of how the business has changed over time. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you go back, you know, five, ten years ago, what you'll have seen looking forward then is, is just growth in terms of what we do and our position within the business. So, uh, so we're a, a really big, significant part of what we do now. Uh, and it, you know, it's distributed globally, uh, international and sort of... Uh, America's market is a, a sort of a, 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 a division, a segmentation for us, and it's roughly equal. So you got like 250, 280 people uh, around the world, okay. sort of doing what we do. And that's it's become increasingly important. I mean, it's uh, having an analysis of the risks that you're that you're going to write is. Uh, are there any risks written these days that don't include models? No, we, we actually had this question internally a while ago, and uh, I, I was doing a, a, a seminar for uh, part of the business, uh, some of the sort of specialty lines business actually, mm -hmm. where um, you know if, if you look at sort of traditional sort of PNC business, where you know people buy a lot of property reinsurance, you know catastrophe and risk. And I think it's well known that that's that's a big part of our market, and it's been well covered. Um, you look at the more specialty lines uh, that exist within the reinsurance community. Uh, we were kind of tasked with looking at you know, how, how are we doing there? Is analytics playing its part? Um, you know, m looking at marine, you know, retrocession uh, on non-marine. Um, looking at areas of aviation. Looking at areas of casualty, long tail lines. And, uh, and I did some analysis, and we looked across the business, and uh, we couldn't find anywhere <laughs> that uh, analytics as a team isn't actually playing a part. I mean, there are degrees of it, obviously. Well, sure, yeah. Um, you know, we rely to a large extent on having data to be able to do our work, uh, um, methodology and tools, stochastic ways of looking at risk. They're pretty well formed, but you know, where data are sometimes not as available, not as detailed. Sometimes that makes it harder for us yeah, to actually sure. do our work. But um, quite seriously, um, we were finding very few places you know, that weren't really exposed to or using analytics. Facultative reinsurance, you know, people are now starting to look at those placements mm -hmm. and groups of facultative uh, placement where you know we we not just for catastrophe, but we you know use the loss histories, use the information. You know, provide more information that help people to understand the value of what they risk transfer. You know, their strategy for risk transfer, and you know, essentially how you price it. So, yeah, conversations are ever expanding, and that makes it for me a fantastic place to lead and really exciting place to work. Yeah, I mean, it's it is really the cutting edge of uh, the insurance industry. It's, yeah, it's, I think uh, where you start. Uh, well, I know you know the United States, of course, is a huge, well-developed market. Yeah. Uh, do you see any in any near future that some of the countries where there's very little insurance penetration, I mean, places yeah. like China, for instance, yeah. uh, are those, what's the pace of development? Yeah, they're, they're like growing. That? I think we would say that, you know, that the heralded 
you know, great emerging markets for reinsurance in, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, in Asia, in uh, parts of Latin America, um, haven't probably lived up, you know, to the to the full expectations of, you know, econometrics and economists, and there's probably good reasons for that if you look at the last sort of five five years particularly. But without a doubt, that's where, you know, we will see. Um, the pace of change in terms of insurance to reinsurance, um, and and in areas where invariably, you know, you have cap perils and multiple cap perils, and uh, I think you know, there's so many parts to try and um, work on, strive to make it better, strive to make the market more possible mm-hmm. and expanding for those areas. So you need to be able to do things like look at say non-traditional perils that uh, you know maybe you understand something about the earthquake risking in China but what do you understand about flood what do you understand about hailstorm what do you understand about some of the, okay, the broader okay. risk and um, what are clients looking to buy is it cat or you know what what, are, what else are they trying to look to buy but I think they're you know trying to sort of link up what's happening in our market right now and all the talk here in Monte Carlo or a lot of it is essentially about you know what's happening with capital new entrance capital, of capital exactly. you know entering you know sensibly hopefully sensibly and ever expanding and the, the some of the you know possible positive consequences for us as a market is that you know we can expand what influence insurance and reinsurance has yeah. in the world and i think that's a massive uh, opportunity and a big challenge because i think you know whatever form of capital um you know, increasingly people are hungry and demand the knowledge about the risk. You know, the data, the portfolios, where things actually are. What are they? What are they? Um, and just understanding better the risk. But you know, if we can dovetail the two, the mm-hmm. capital, the understanding of risk, then we can expand our marketplace. And that's why, uh, just before Monte Carlo, I was saying, you know, genuinely, I feel like the next couple of years could be, could be very exciting as we try and sort of move out into new areas. Well, yeah, you've got new capital and it has to find a place Mm. to be used, basically. Yes, yeah, and there's, you know, there will be a huge surplus. What do you do? You you give it back, you use it, what's the, you know? Market creation is difficult, um, but it's our challenge, it's got to be. If you actually draw the kind of, the panorama, of risk, risk of um, risk around people, risk around property, um, then you see that we, we play a significant part and reinsurance is kind of honed in on you know where you have frequency, where you have severity, where it is possible to actually <clears throat> manage the risk through transfer. Um, but uh, then th- th- we need to expand our product. And we need to make sure that we're relevant and, 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 and the capital will stay, I'm sure. Uh, just in curiosity, related to that, I mean, some of the new risks that are coming, I'm thinking specifically of cy- mm. cyber liability or that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, how difficult is it to actually to analyze that? To- Without a doubt, it is difficult. Uh, some of the risks, a, a good example would be looking at things like uh, you know, contingent BI, um, areas of cyber risk, areas of, um, you know, all kinds of things, electromagnetic storm, how that can put out power yeah. systems and create, you know, business interruption. Um, they're, they're, they're all areas that I think, you know, what we're trying to do at AMBM Field Analytics is make people aware that they, that they are out there, they do happen, and there is history, um, and, and therefore we then try and move it on to the next part of the agenda, which is, okay, who's concerned, how can we makes a risk transfer for that but you know you know we get it you know to to have you know mutual parties that want to transact with each other be Mm -hmm. partners in business on risk then you know then then they're not just going to do it through relationship they're they're going to have a a a proper conversation around risk quantification uncertainty volatility and uh, and that's our job our job is to to make people aware and then to to do what we can to, to make the conversation more possible to risk transfer. So, yeah, lots of very broad, uh, broadening, broadening our areas for um, for us to look at, and, and uh, completely within the skill base of the industry to 
to do it. We're talking about the sort of the, I guess, the prospects for the future mm -hmm. uh, in analytics, which which seem to be just vast. And I, yeah. I don't know. It's uh, it's not going to be easy, I guess. To some of these things are pretty uh, pretty obscure. I mean, an electromagnetic storm that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, that, that can you actually analyze something like that? I, I mean, yeah, you, you you can you can find. Um, we tend to break things into component parts when we look at risk, and you know we're looking for um, to begin with, you know, co you know things that what what's what's happening, what's causing um, the, the the risk to manifest itself. So we're, we're looking for um, patterns in past history, and and when and when you do look, um, you know, you connect with research, which is a a huge part of our philosophy is urban field analytics to connect with research what's going on you find that there are so many other parts of our <clears throat> our world and our community that are that are very engaged in in looking at these kind of uh, risks solar flares from the sun mm -hmm. you know electromagnetic storms there, there there is more than we would see you know we, we are tasked with um, managing our day-to-day -day business you know uh, Playing our part in, in the industry and working for our stakeholders, but you know, it, what, what we have is a function of research in the in our in our team that looks out into the community and sees what is actually there, what should people be more aware of, what are people actually doing in research to tell us more about the risk, and um, and that historical set of patterns is um, is entirely something you can bring. To the community, I think sometimes people feel because they don't see frequency uh, uh, that it hasn't happened in their lifetime. Well, maybe we shouldn't worry. Um, but you know, we tend to get tripped up by those things. You know, we tend to, um, you know, look um, at that sort of shorter-term perspective, uh, and the longest-term perspectives also um, often show us um, frequency and severity. And big challenge is actually then, so you've got causality, and that's about consequence. And yes, there's massive challenges around consequence, how you actually get to a point where you can put monetary value on that, um, that risk. Um, but you know, we are finding more and more, as we work with academic institutes, universities, um, we, we, we're finding ways to be able to um, turn that into a language, if you like, that the that the industry understands, you know, as, as you know, obviously the industry is about uncertainty and volatility. Yeah, and risk. If we can <laughs> somehow characterize that, even if it's large, you know, there can be a conversation. Of course. Do you uh, do you factor in any anything to do with uh, uh, climate change? Basically, uh, warmer sea temperatures, melting ice, uh, that, yeah, that sort of thing. I mean, climate change is a huge subject area. I was actually. Um, a few weeks ago, I was at uh, the University of East Anglia in the UK, and they have something called the Tyndall Centre, which is a phenomenal unit, mainly working at policyholder level, um, policy maker level within government, for looking at issues of climate change. And I think it's difficult, you know, I don't think everybody's necessarily on board with um, climate change, um, you know, what it means, what the consequences are, um, uh, and that makes it difficult. Uh, but, you know, the way I see it, we need to continue to work and understand what the implications, as much as we can in a difficult area, what the implications could be of climate change. <clears throat> One of our example areas, so we have um, a team at AM Penfield Impact Forecasting that build catastrophe models. Um, they use, you know, historical data, they look at sort of statistical information, but they also look at climate models, the same global climate circulation models that are being used to try and develop policy in terms of you know, how people feel about a changing world. And, and, and I, I strongly believe that, that that will continue to come closer and closer together in terms of then what we understand of the risk. So, um, so the two, you know, they are and they will continue to merge. And we will understand more. But I, it, it's, a, it's a difficult area without a, without a doubt. Well, 
it's nice to know that you're you're working on all of these, and uh, I'm sure if anybody can analyze them, it was is probably a uh, Benfield. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you very much, much indeed. John, my Cheers. pleasure.